to the Sam Livecast. I'm Sam. Uh, three ingredient week continues, and I'm starting in the kitchen because what I'm going to make has to go into the oven for about 25 minutes. So I thought I'd get it going now, throw it in there, then sit down at the table. We could talk about what we have to talk about. So three ingredients today. We're making hoisin chicken empanadas. Lynn said, what are in them? I said, guess, and he guessed chicken. Yes, hoisin, yes, and it was empanada, which in our case, for the outside, we're using these uh, already made pie shells because what's the point of making your own dough? I mean, you're totally welcome to. I don't want to discourage you from making something that you want to make. How difficult is that? Making their own pie dough? Yeah. Uh, it's I'm, a little time consuming. Uh huh. You know, I mean, it's uh, flour, it's water, it's uh, chilled uh, lard or butter oh. and mixing and you get to flat you gotta roll it and and and, and massage it what do they call it knead it oh. wrap it got in it. saran put it in the fridge leave it for an hour bring it back out or boom you just buy yeah. them at the store already done hey tell the people who we are and where they can find us so um well obviously you know to watch us on the sam livecast mm -hmm. com because you're there but you can follow us along in conversation on facebook uh facebook.com forward slash Sam the Cooking Guy. You can follow us on Twitter at, uh, at thecookingguy.com and blah, 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 blah. You can watch this on Ustream mm -hmm. after the fact, which I think is very cool. And soon to be Roku, if whatever the Roku guys are doing, get their shit together. It's, what, hey, they've gotten hey, their shit I, together. I know, I and know. It's, it's coming. coming. It's coming. By it's the coming. way, I downloaded some of those other channels, yeah. um, some of the other channels developed by the software firm, and they look awesome. They do? Okay, good. Oh, yeah. Are we going to look awesome as well? We, we will. Okay, good. So look for us on Roku. Any, any year now, we'll be on Roku. Yes. <laughs> Which, by the way, we just got a Roku. Max just got a Roku for his birthday. And? It's amazing. Better than uh, I Apple say, TV. Better. I, better than Apple TV. Wow. And why? Believe it or not. Um, I just, uh, I guess the, just the functionality of it and, and a huge thing for me is the HBO Go. Are they the same price? Uh, just about. Yeah, actually, a Roku is a little cheaper. A little cheaper. Really? And if people don't know, HBO Go, if you have HBO at home on your TV, you can also get HBO on your uh, iPhone or on your p iPad. Mm -hmm. And you like it. Because you're using our HBO from here at your place. Yes. Okay, so here's the chicken that's done. We're going to put in some um, hoisin sauce. And, and I've said it before, hoisin is sort of, uh, to my explanation, sort of like a Chinese barbecue sauce. Lynn, am I close with that? Mm, yeah. I would say, it, I wouldn't say barbecue sauce. I mean, it's like a, uh, look at it. It's a thick, gelatinous-y. It actually looks kind of gross as I'm putting in here now. It does. <laughs> the thing is, honestly, it's one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite things ever. So, I mean, I might thin this with a little soy because it's a little bit thick, but I can't use a fourth ingredient. So I'm just going to do deal with this, and just going to get this moistened. In fact, we're going to be sort of putting it in these little pie dough shells and sealing them up. And I grabbed some flour earlier to put the flour on, on the cutting board. And Lynn goes, oh, whoa, 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 what? He goes, flour? I go, yeah, the cutting board, I'm going to, he goes, it's a fourth ingredient. Ooh. That is. I go, no, 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 dude, it's not going He's in. Quite he the goes, stickler. well, technically, so I won't use it. And these things will all stick on here and be a pain. What a stickler. He is a stickler. <laughs> but I, if, I had, if I had wax paper which I don't. So I feel like I need something. I feel like it's going to stick to this. No, you this don't, you to. Flour, flour is a pantry item, maybe. No, 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 dude. You called me for it. I'm not going to do it. Hey, you know what? Those plastic bags that they come in are kind of wax paper-like. I know, but I don't, I don't have one wide enough. How does Jeez. flour not fall into the sh salt category? It's the exact same thing. It, 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 it might. And, but I look at it, now that it's been brought up to me, what I don't want to do is buy myself a, I don't want to buy myself critics complaining that I did something that I shouldn't do. Now I need, I'm going to make these kind of small. I'll make them like this. Ooh. One, two. <laughs> look at your sand cup. Three, mm -hmm. 
for? This, for some reason, it reminds me of my childhood and you Fruit. making eggs in a hole for me. Really? Right. With a with a Sam shot glass. Okay, so let me see if I can do <laughs> that. That was a very little egg in a hole then. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually the perfect size. You don't want it too big. Because the bread's the That's best part. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, and we're already oh, there for the night. Big. You know, I said uh, I put on Facebook, I'm making something that's small and warm and you can hold in your hand. And then I said, uh, that's what she said. <laughs> no, I actually put TWSS, which I just learned yesterday from Kelly. Are you guys going to talk about the uh, SEAL concert that yes, you went I to Yes, I will when night? we sit down, but I have to do my work. You do, you do. I have to do my work. So here's, cool. here's your goal, right? You're just putting a little bit of this in each one of these. Now look, if I wasn't sticking to the four ingredient rule, uh, I might put a little chili sauce in here. Uh, I might put a little soy just to add a little bit more flavor. And I think it would be really delicious. But I'm not doing that because I'm trying to say you can do this in three meals. You could make these bigger if you wanted. I think this is a great appetizer. Uh, a fun appetizer, right? Rather than rather than the same stuff that you make all the time. And please try not to make the same stuff all the time. And I know you give me shit for doing this all the time, yeah. but did the did you say where the chicken came from? Uh, no, chicken came, it was a, it was a thank you, it was a deli roasted chicken, mm -hmm. or a rotisserie chicken uh, that came from the supermarket. And what, I, what I say all the time is, it was they're like six bucks or something, or maybe seven. I don't know, but by the time you buy a whole chicken yourself, a mm -hmm. raw chicken, and to deal with getting it out of the package without getting the the uh, the chicken germs all over it. Ew. Because people are all freaked out about the about the uh, chicken bacteria or whatever it is. I wonder why. Can I use Pam? Pam, I can use. What's yes. Oil. Okay, thank you. Remember, I said lubricants are okay. <laughs> so now we just take one of these little guys. We try and put it over the top. I feel like those are really full. Ugh. No? Just me? I don't know. I why they might burst me? out. Not, why so if they burst, they burst. Why why do I have to have crap from you guys about this? Look how cute that is. That right? is kinda cute. Let me check that out. That That's is pretty freaking cute. Right? cute. <laughs> oh it's God. blurry and cute and dark and cute and there. <laughs> there we you go. go. <laughs> nice. Okay, so the goal is just to put these guys on here. And I've got enough to make the next uh, batch of these, but I'm not going to, Max. Why? Because you got some place you got to go. <laughs> and were you starting to have yeah, a bit of a meltdown? No, maybe because um, I have work, first of all. And second of all, um, maybe you're not going to make all of the second tray of those because we <laughs> don't all want to sit here and watch you do that for a half an hour. I'm just saying, well, that's a good point, too, actually. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Okay, so just let me get let me get these guys done here, and then we'll if you bring them to me, I'll stuff them. Um. <laughs> Don't why do you see why do you have to try and use that's what she said to everything, Kelly? No, now I'm no now response F it. to that. I'm doing every one of these myself. It's not going to take me that much longer, and then we're going to be able to sit down. Uh, by the way, uh, this should go without saying, but the fact that I'm filling these with a with hoisin chicken means that you could fill them with almost anything. Hell yes. This could be... Um, Beef. Yes. But it also could be like um, apple pie filling. You could make like oh. uh, apple... Um, what are those things called? Caramel empanadas. What are, no, what are those things you get at McDonald's called, man? Apple pies? Pie. Apple pies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. an empanada is basically a Mexican apple pie. Spanish, right? All worlds, you know. I mean, and look at the Asian world has their versions of these things too, right? Mm -hmm. Wontons, right? I, I make another version with um, with pil with those uh, refrigerator biscuits. I'm starting to worry these things are all going to freaking fall, fall apart. My oven's on to 375. What would you use to make them not fall apart? Uh, what I might do uh, would be to just put a little water on here. And I think would help seal them up a little bit better. But I wouldn't want to be accused of using another ingredient. I don't want somebody to go, oh, the guy's a lame ass. <laughs> I only have one more to go after this. And I can't wait to eat them. 
I can't wait to eat them either. The possibilities are endless that you could fill them. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Boysenberry jam or something, you know, I mean, sh anything. Curry. Curry would be great. Okay, so look, here we have them. We'll give them these. Because my mom used to do that with stuff. She'd put that little fork mark on top. Okay, this is good, this is good, this is good, thank you. Get out of here, go back in the fridge. I'm almost ready. Coming to sit down, everybody. Yay. In the oven, 375. Let's give it a uh, kitchen timer, 20 minutes. I'll check it then. You know, when a recipe tells you to, um, uh, to cook something at uh, some main time, uh, cook for 35 minutes. If it's the first time you've made it, uh, definitely cut the time back a little bit and check. Don't take their word for granted that, hold on a sec. Don't take their word for granted that the 35 minutes that they say is gonna be right. In fact, don't take anything for granted in a cookbook the first time you make it because it may be all fucked up. Well, and just, everybody's ovens are different. Well, that's exactly right. Just because, just because uh, the person is a well-known cooking celebrity, and I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about the way bigger people, uh, and they say do this for this long at that temperature, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work out for you the way they say it's going to work out. I remember my very first time on the Today Show. Uh, you send your recipes ahead of time, they call you, they talk about them, then you get there and they make them. You walk onto the set and the shit is all made, right? It's a very professional organization. They do a really great job. They're super nice people. And they said to me that morning about an hour before I went on the very first time, oh, by the way, well, your stuff was great. It worked out really nicely. And I said, as a novice, what do you mean? Why wouldn't it work out? And they said, uh, you'd be surprised whose stuff we get that doesn't work out. Really? And I go, like, who? Mm -hmm. And they go, all sorts of huge cooking celebrities. I go, what? They go, like, I've never heard anybody walk louder than Lynn. Is it me? <laughs> it's so funny the way your size 14s just slap along when you walk. <laughs> 13s. Size 13s. They said, huge Food Network personalities. We're not giving you any names, but just think multiple shows, multiple books. They send recipes in here, we make them, and we're supposed to be making a chocolate cake and it's basically a mud puddle at the end of it. Nothing works out. I go, wow, that's interesting. I so the point is, when you get a recipe from somebody, you've not made it before, use your head looking for typos. If your neighbor gives you a thing and it says 14 cups of sugar, maybe it should say a quarter cup of sugar and they wrote it down wrong, mm -hmm. right? Especially when it's the same the cooking guy recipe. Yeah. Because we know those can be... Uh well, here's my problem. My problem is this. I would shoot the show. I'd make three or four things, and then I'd have to remember what it was for the website, and I wouldn't be shooting from a recipe. I'd be shooting from my head, and then I'd have to turn it into paper. It was all screwed up. And you know what? Sugar is actually a really important one because in pies and things, you can cut back on sugar if you don't like a pie Abs to be too absolutely. sweet. Absolutely. And they always max out on the sugar. They always so. max out on the sugar. Like, a, yeah. Hang on one sec. Can you do that two shot over there uh, of those geez, guys? Jeez, Jordan. <laughs> Jordan, <laughs> you might not want to put your fingers in your nose. Oh. Just because there's a camera here. <laughs> Just saying. I took it off. I <laughs> saw that. I didn't want to say anything. I though. don't want to embarrass him anymore. I didn't know how to say that. Well, Maybe you we just need got code him pretty good. That. Maybe we need code for that. But I saw that quickly. So this day in 1947. Mm -hmm. Do you know what happened in 1947? Wait, hold on. What's the date? August 7th, 7th. 1947. August 14th, nineteen. If nobody's going to know this. <laughs> Wait. You weren't born. You're not going to know this. You know what? Okay, I know. Because I, I thought this was I thought this was just like lore. Okay, go ahead. Lore. In 1947, the Contiki, a balsa wood raft captained by Norwegian anthropologist Thor Heyerdahl, completed a 4,300-mile, 101-day journey from Peru to Raroria in the Tuamotu archipelago near Tahiti. He wanted to prove his theory that the prehistoric South Americans could have colonized the Polynesian islands by drifting on ocean currents. They set sail from Kelao, Peru on the 40-square-foot... That's 10 by 4. What? 10 feet by 4 feet. Five people. 
They set sail on the 40-square-foot Contiki on April 27th, 1947, and they landed hey, vey, near Tahiti uh, 101 days later, 4,300 miles. That was this day in 1947. Do you know what happened this day in 1959? <laughs> I do. Yeah. I was born. Same it is my birthday. Guy was born. But I have to admit... Um, this show tonight, Wednesday night, is actually being taped Tuesday night. We don't want to lie to you about that. Uh, I have actually an event right now that I can't be here for. I know this is very confusing. So we <laughs> pre-taped this. We didn't want you not to have a show tonight. So we pre-taped this uh, Tuesday night, which is actually August 7th. And wait, to make things more confusing, yeah. tomorrow night, when it is tonight and they're actually watching, you physically will be here in the kitchen at the exact same time as the live cast. Oh, doing that's your private true. Event. No, no, no. It's a grocery outlet tomorrow night. Oh, okay. Yeah, Forget sorry. it. <laughs> Scratch so that. Close, that'd be funny. <laughs> mm-hmm. And by the way, August is National Catfish Month. And why is that important? Lynn? He just walked out of the I room. have no idea. This guy, he's got a lot of movement. Tonight. Ask Becky, because we know she knows. Well, she can't answer. She can't, but we won't know. Uh, because we, we made that swai last night. Yeah. Is that how you say it, Lynn? Swai. Swai not. Swai not. We did swai. It was good. No, Mom, it was actually a great fish. It's really you good. No, really no, no, no. It was it. great. You would have liked that recipe. Swine. Can you pull up that picture of the swai yeah. fish? Yeah. Pull up the picture of the swai. So I got. let me tell you this. The, so the, the three ingredient last night was the swai uh, uh, cooked on the flat top with nothing but a jar of roasted red peppers chopped up. And the garlic from inside the jar, chopped up, in a pan, uh, sautéed with a little olive oil, regular olive oil, and parsley mixed in at the end, put on top of the fish. You'll see the pictures. Mm. Freaking beautiful. But here's what I did at the end. Uh, I drizzled some amazing um, um, olive oil on top of it. And the one that I used is the Quarantina, which is my new favorite from We Olive. And I don't want you thinking I'm talking about extra virgin olive oil because we all of as a sponsor. Because I've said before, very often the last thing that I add to food to add a depth of flavor and a really lovely richness. Boy, that sounds really ridiculous. <laughs> but it's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. The very last thing that I often add is a really good olive oil. And this Quarantina is my absolute newest favorite from we all of it is so good and by the way they only sell california olive oil council mm -hmm. uh, certified oils which means they guarantee really great olive oil you can go to weolive.com you can click on uh shop now or shop or what is it or it's the other page doesn't matter you go shop, shop now you go to the promo code at the end of your purchase cycle put in the uh, promo code sam s-a-m and uh, you'll get 10% off your order. No matter how much you buy, mm -hmm. it's only nine ninety five shipping. Weolive.com, they're the shit. You sent me a message last, a text message that said, a picture of the Quarantina uh, bottle the Quarantina. that said, I love this Tell shit. Tell Josh, <laughs> I love this shit. Yep. And you said, I do too. And I went, no, this one specifically, I, I am all about. It was so good on top of the fish last night. It was night. really good. It really, I mean, it'd be it interesting brought to it all do, together it'd be, to me. It'd be fun to show people like the difference between a cooked item and a really good olive oil on top of it, and a cooked same cooked item with nothing on top. I think you'd really like it. Oh yeah. Anyway, uh, that's cool. Uh, let me think. So I remember, I remember being at Hebrew school as a young boy. Sunday school. Yeah, it was Sunday school, and um, <clears throat> listening to the teacher talk, having trouble with my Hebrew. <laughs> and complaining about the, how difficult it was. And the teachers always said this. You think Hebrew is difficult. English is the most difficult language. And of course, to people that spoke English, how could that possibly be true? But she said it was things like, um, I, will I will throw the ball. Uh, he walked through the door. Throw, throw, through, through. He threw the ball. He walked through the door. Those kinds of things mm -hmm. for somebody whose English is a second language are very confusing. 
So I walked, went for years thinking, it's probably a good point. I can see how our language is very confusing to people. Until I came across another language <laughs> that I think is a little bit more difficult. And I will I'll give you an example of this. My, my volume is working here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you some uh, Cantonese tones examples. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hit the button. It's going to play the word fu, <laughs> basically F-U, six times. I want you to see if you can discern the difference between these six times. You ready? Mm -hmm. Listen. Fu, 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 fu. <laughs> you have, just have this once more. Hold on. Fu, 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 fu. Here's the difference. Husband, tiger, rich, support with hands or assist, woman, negative. Fu so you. Husband, so husband and woman are basically. Depending on how you say it, uh, it's either husband, man, or a uh, woman. Shut the foo up. It could be you support someone or you're negative. That's that what, shit yeah, it's is like tough. Okay, how about okay, this? You could get yourself in a lot of trouble. You get yourself in a lot of trouble. How about mm. this one? C S I. C C C C C C. Silk. Shit. <laughs> test. Time. City. Yes. Can you imagine trying to learn the language? Hold. Wait for it. C C C C C. What the hell, Lynn? You know, I'm, I actually speak Mandarin. Which I'm just saying, is, it's similar. generally your people stuff. That's crazy, no? Yeah, well, we have like a different number of the accents, but yeah, it's, it's just as crazy. And you can, there, there's, a, <laughs> there, there's a great like a little Chinese saying, I'll see if I can remember it, but it, it has to do with um, the syllable ma. Yeah. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, mama chi ma, ma man, ma 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 ma. <laughs> the mama, mama. And Wait, you know, the mama, actual, mama, mama chima. So apart from the chi that was in there, all that, the words are essentially the same. No, no, that's and that's actually a story. That's no, a I'm story? saying I'm saying all the words that's are essentially the same, but they're all differently used. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and, and translate. So, um, mama chima means mom rode a horse. Okay, ma man, the horse was slow. Mama ma ma, mom got mad at the horse. So. Mom rode a horse. The horse is slow. Mom got mad at the wow. horse. Mom took the horse down to the local <laughs> restaurant, and they ate it for dinner that night. Probably. <laughs> Did I tell you I had a donkey in, in oh, Shanghai? No way. Oh, no. God. <laughs> you know what? I don't know. That actually is not worse than Sam eating the seagull. No. See, what's weird what? is that, it, let's say there's, um, <laughs> in India, there's the, the uh, Ranjit livecast going on in India right now. They're dying at the fact thinking about us eating beef. Right. That is just like us I, I eating you, dogs look, and look, horses. The, the, world, the world is very interesting that way mm -hmm. in that what we like, somebody else doesn't. Who are we to say that donkey is bad? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Was there skin on the donkey? No, oh. it, was a, it was dumpling, man. It was dumpling. Donkey dumpling. <laughs> it was donkey dumpling. Donkey dumpling? I'm sorry. It wasn't in Shanghai either. It was actually in, um, in mainland China. Wow. Mainland China... Is the, they dying to go. much more traditional in certain areas, right, Lynn? I mean, uh, like more. The place I was at was really rural. That's why we had donkey dumplings. Okay, I'm so <laughs> I'm guessing in you the eat, rural look, areas they're more limited to. What look, they at, can here's get. the thing: um, many parts of the world eat all of an animal because they had no money, and you would not take a cow or a pig and use only the. The well-known expensive bits. Mm -hmm. It would be foolish to do that. So they didn't just eat fillet cuts. They didn't just eat fillet cuts. Oh. Which, by the way, brings me to a point. Stefan uh, Walkowiak writes: My wife just bought Chuck mock tender steaks. Never had them. How would you make them, Sam? Mock tender. Don't know I've what never that heard is. of that expression. I'm gonna guess, and maybe you can Google it. I'm gonna guess that mock tender means a cut from a normally not particularly tender part of the animal that cooked the right way is, is going to end up being more tender? 
No, see, that's funny. What yes, so I get that, and that crossed my mind, but I'm wondering if it's like mock beef. No, it's not mock. It's Well, the word mock is very confusing, but if it said, if, if, if uh, Stefan said, my wife just bought mock steaks, tender mock steaks, then I would say yes. It meant fake meat, fake beef. But Chuck mock tender. Yeah. Yeah, I, the scriptor before tender that tells me he that just, he just put the words in the wrong order. I think we're getting caught up on the word mock, Did on you what, it, what we th- yeah, understand it to mean. I think mock means something else in this case, like a, maybe a part of the animal, like well, let's, something let's, that we've never heard of. What's like it say? Mock? Well, this is this. T- it's actually a tough steak, so it's not tender. And this tough little steak comes from point of the chuck primal next to the top blade, which I have no idea where it is. But there are other names for it. Chuck fillet steak, Chuck clawed tender, shoulder tender. Clawed? Petite fillet. What the hell does that mean? Petite fillets. Mm. You get that in a, in a fancy steak place. Yeah. But petite. But in, That's but in cute. That, he doesn't but in know that because term- he doesn't look at anything He's never called ordered petite anything on petite. a <laughs> menu. But, but when they say <laughs> petite, what they mean is they mean a small fillet. Like a six ounce fillet as opposed to an eight ten or whatever. Um, Did we set the oven timer, by the way? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, it's got four minutes left for uh, okay. for the twenty minutes. It still might take a few minutes after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Max, okay. I know you got someplace. No, to no, no, no. I was just making sure I didn't want to burn. So we spoke uh, last night, which, if you're watching, was two nights ago. About this is uh, clearly this is uh, three ingredient week. Next week will be uh, salad week. Mm-hmm. Much to everyone's en- uh, enjoyment, they'll be happy about that. A lot of people asking for about that. Mm-hmm. So we had a couple people chime in and say. We got a great suggestion. Nancy Tabern Cannon wrote and said, I would like to see cook once, eat twice a week. I think that's a great suggestion. You awesome. love that. Do you? I Dad love that. Loves I do especially that. Oh, yeah. love that. Love that suggestion. We will definitely do that, Nancy. Definitely. Chris Clapp wrote, how about breakfast week? Whether you actually have it in the morning or for lunch or dinner, a great breakfast can be simple. And use up leftovers too. I think it's a good idea. I wrote back and said, we've definitely done our share of breakfast items. But I think a breakfast week would be really fun. And then he said, I enjoy the show, Sam. I enjoy the show. Sam is always hilariously and realistically faulted. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at that and I went, hey, really? Oh, oh. Does that, is that a good thing? I think it's a great thing. I take that as a huge compliment. And then he wrote, so refreshing. Thank you very much. So those are two great suggestions. Breakfast week and uh, cook once, eat twice week. Definitely. You, you love idea. breakfast, too. Uh, I just lost sound up here. Okay. If anybody cares. I'm going to, while we're looking, let me just check and see what's going on in here. So they're looking pretty good, and they're staying together. I figure we've got about another three or four minutes left to this. Okay. Um. In the meantime, let me just talk about this Olympic thing that's been bugging me a little bit. Hold on one sec. Don't look, man. Excuse me. Oh, you're going to do it yourself. I got you. Yeah. I got to change the other one, too. Okay. Which other one? Just just stay still. Okay. What's that large Asian guy doing? Oh, it, hey, Dad, just in case you don't realize, there's a large Asian man on your ass. Well, I can see <laughs> that. And, and in case way, you man, didn't know. I, I can feel it. <laughs> Whoa. So I have this question, right? So we're all watching the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless this is a rerun in, you know, February, and then we're not watching the Olympics. But we've been watching the Olympics, and I'm loving them. I read today about the uh, U.S. judo player that got tested positive for marijuana. Mm-hmm. Did you hear about him? I did not. And, of course, they threw him out. Right? They, uh-huh. sent, they sent him packing. Yeah. Jordan. Uh, I did hear this. They sent the guy packing, right? Here's what the guy said. The guy said it was a brownie that he ate before he left the United States. <laughs> really? I heard that. I heard if if you guys don't stop messing with those fucking Cheetos, I'm going to go crazy. Is Jordan eating Cheetos? No, Seriously, it's I two of the them. I bag and I dumped them out. She dumped it. He was eating them. I gave him a dirty look and then mom dumped them out to facilitate the eating. Don't no, and then, you can't and eat Cheetos. No, and it just see what you don't know I forgot the is country. it just came on the heels of somebody in the back room messing with a mic or something. 
You, I throw very easily. Thank you very much. Continue. So the guy gets thrown out. He claims it was a brownie that he ate before he left the States. He called it an inadvertent consumption. <laughs> so my should question I, I is, ask it? Okay, yeah. my question is, these guys work for years, years for a, a 12 second race, mm -hmm. for one lap, for, for one judo match, maybe for whatever it is. Really, an inadvertent consumption of a brownie? So, just to clarify, yep. you're saying, obviously, it wasn't inadvertent. He, this guy was just an idiot, and he screwed up. That's what he's saying. Because how can... But he's how saying can he was an idiot, and he screwed up. And I'm saying, no, I don't buy no, it. No, I, 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 from what I, I think what I hear is that he's saying, I accidentally ate a brownie <sighs> that... That not I accidentally ate a brownie at all. I accidentally ate a brownie that was contaminated. Is that what he's saying? That's what he's saying. I think. Okay. And I don't buy it. I don't buy it either. It's not, it just doesn't work for me. Yeah. But then it takes me to my next point that really pissed me off today. Mm -hmm. That some of the Olympic athletes are very upset when they get a silver medal. And I can see how hard they work and how much they want the gold. But when you don't get the gold, you get silver. And so be angry for a couple of minutes. But when you're on the medal stand, that's not the time to hang on to that anger and have the mean bite face going on. That, to me, just has become poor sportsmanship. Who did that? That's what that says. That's... Or Who you, did that? You're just talking in general. No, I'm talking about one person in particular that I saw up there. I can't remember the girl's why name. Is the gr name. It's the f the girl that's that. The it's the, the falter. Not the Fal falter. The falter. <laughs> the falter. She it's the falter on the, the vault. vault. <laughs> the girl and the girl that that faulted on the vault. The one that every went into this and see part of the problem is I think the media builds these people up. There's no way that she can lose. There's no way. She basically just has to do it. And then she'll get it. She's never made a mistake. She's, she's the best that's ever been. And then she screws up. And that's what the Olympics is all about. It can happen or it can't happen. So you don't know the game you're going to have. If you're not first, you're that's actually not true. Because <laughs> if you're not first, you can be second. But she stood there with the face that... How about be respectful of the fact that somebody did get the gold because they did better at you at that moment? Michaela and, Maroney. Oh, yeah, you're talking Maroney, about the... Right, and yes. I love her. I think she's great, but come on. I was so sad to see that face. I was sad for her. I was sad with how the whole thing looked. Let's see the face right there. That was wow. it. That was on the metal stand. That's not what I think should yeah, be shown. Yeah, that's a poor little bitchy face. Yeah. It's a poor little bitchy face. <laughs> <laughs> and so my only other Olympic rant that I don't get, somebody explained to me how the NBA can be playing in the Olympics and the Williams sisters can be dominating in the tennis like they do. And look, I'm happy they're there, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that they're representing, and they're amazing athletes. I just don't get how that professional an athlete can be there at the Olympics. They, it doesn't make sense. They dropped the amateur status of an Olympian a while ago, so they can do that now. And so anybody can go? Are you saying, like, Dad, have you grown up with uh, young Olympians, 18-year-olds? I mean... Yeah, no, you're right. Like there was a I, time when you could not be a professional, or you, yeah, of that like caliber and, yeah. and competing. See, and I, and I don't, I don't think you should be a professional of that caliber. I don't get it. I don't, I don't see how that. I don't, I don't see how these are ready. I'm gonna take these out. You know, if I had to take a guess, it would have to be because big sports like soccer, basketball, things like that. You know, I don't get it. You know, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring these. I'm gonna put them on a plate, and I'm gonna bring them right here. How's that? Okay, cool. So you guys just can, Jordan can follow awesome. me for a yeah, second. Jordan will follow you. Give me one sec. Just let me get these guys. No pressure, Jordan. He's but got don't it. screw it up. Because <laughs> dad is cranky and he's going to no, get No, I'm not cranky. Noise. I just get cranky with the noise. The noise makes me insane. God. So here's how they look like coming out. Oh, look at it. They look beautiful. Let me just show right here. That might have been a mistake. Let me take them out of here. 
Oh yeah, these are nice. How did they smell? They smell fantastic. But here's the thing. I love... Um, I love pie dough. You could put these uh, around uh, old shoes. Hmm. You could put pie dough around old shoes and I would eat them. And they're yeah. going to be too hot. So I'm going to read, I'm going to read a, an email thing that I got. Okay. Uh, so that's the Olympics thing. I, I don't have anything more to say on it. I really I just wanted to bitch about all three of those things. <laughs> look how good they look, though. Yep, they look very and nice. They could be anything, right? They could be anything stuff. In, uh, in a second, I'm going to eat one, yeah. Those look amazing. They do, and they're going to be... And they didn't burst. I'm you know, really see impressed. Yeah, they're Give perfect. Me, ye have little faith. Never. Look how beautiful they are. Okay, so uh, Brian Herbert. Greetings, uh, all the Sam Cooking Guy folks. Not sure he'll be exactly reading this, but, but I wanted to pass along a link to a blog post. So he writes a blog. I don't know how long he's been writing it, um, but I read just this first one. I'm curious to get Sam uh, and everybody's opinion. Uh, I watch every week. Uh, I love watching every week and listening in my car. Not looking for publicity for the post. Just thought it would make, make a fun, quick read for Sam. Mm-hmm. Wanted to bring it to my attention. So he's writing about a Bon Appetit uh, July 2012 grilling issue about ribs. And he writes, The other day I saw something horrific, something so disgusting and vulgar that it should be removed from society. A little dramatic. Neither children nor adults should be subjected to such brutality. It was so horrible it has taken me several days to come to grips with it and even begin to put it into words. Lynn, you should go in there and listen to what I'm saying. We need your opinion on this, too. I'm hearing it. Okay. So he writes about going to a grocery store recently. He picked up the July 2012 issue of Bon Appetit. Uh, however, on this particular... He talks about how great a magazine it is, right? Um, I'm not... I'm bon not Appetit's. following you right now at all, Well, man. sorry. <laughs> I'm not in Bon Appetit's target market, but I do add new recipes to the repertoire from time to time. Like, however, on this particular day, I saw that the July 2012 issue of Bon Appetit was paying homage to the lower class. The lower class. To the street urchins who generally satiate themselves with fast food or ingredients in their home cooked meals that are not organic or farm to table, which I guess he's talking about me. <laughs> Indeed, it was the annual grilling issue and the cover shot was a plate of full of sweet, sticky ribs. I got As a issue. pit master on a professional barbecue team, I scooped it up and I headed to the checkout. He was all excited to read it. The cover story was billed as the most amazing ribs, blah, blah, blah. I was excited that perhaps I'd find a new tip or technique. Tell me, Bon Appetit Magazine, a trusted source for recipes. How could you possibly publish a recipe that calls for you to bake ribs in the oven for two to three hours? Let them cool and then throw them on the grill at the last minute to char them up. Hmm. Just like any good sleazy infomercial, though, the article says, but wait, there's more, and they haven't done enough damage, as if they haven't done enough damage by telling people to take the lazy way out of cooking them and not actually smoking the ribs. They go on to double your offer of laziness, tell you to brush on some store-bought sauce as you put them on the grill to char them. Not a homemade sauce, not a locally sourced sauce crafted by a barbecuer. No, nope, their sauce of choice, craft. Are you kidding me? Well, it's pretty easy to see how Brian feels, isn't it? Apparently, Brian has not read my most recent cookbook, Just Grill This, where I talk about roasting ribs in the oven for about an hour and a quarter, then putting them on the grill and brushing <laughs> craft barbecue sauce. That's on. hilarious. And he apparently has not seen the live cast where he made. Apparently, he's not seen the live cast when I did that. Ribs. And by the way, to piss Brian off even more, to the craft barbecue sauce, I add Aunt Jemima pancake syrup <laughs> and brown sugar. And I've never made the ribs and have somebody not go, holy shit, dude, can I have this recipe? If you haven't seen that live cast, you can go to the samlivecast.com homepage in the in the um, search box, put 
ribs. And anything that we've done with ribs will come up. And this recipe will come up. And you should watch them. They're amazing. Episode now, look, nine. I've started appreciating uh, the beauty of, of charcoal. Mesquite. I've been using my, my big green egg uh, quite a lot in the past month. And I appreciate it. But I have to say, Brian, I believe that Bon Appetit has an obligation to speak to everybody and not just pit masters especially regular people like us people that want to eat well but don't want it to take forever they might not people that might not have a whole smoking setup at their house they might have a little tiny hibachi they might have that four dollar 99 cent thing we talked about last night on the live cast and they're going to cook ribs in the oven they're going to put them on there you got to remember a whole lot of us make up this world, not just pitmasters, my friend. Did you, did you email him back at all? Or I haven't you, yet. That's, that's, that's hilarious. I haven't yet. But it's so funny because it's like everything he was saying about that he hated in that article was exactly what I do part of the time. I like to slow smoke ribs. But there's times when I want ribs that taste good, but I don't want to take forever. <clears throat> Three ingredient week. Chicken, hoisin, empanadas. And, and the verdict? They're fucking delicious. <laughs> oh, my God. Now I'm trying to eat well, so I can't really eat these. Mm. But you made so many. Well, no. They're sweet, a little bit sweet, chickeny. Right. Could I put other things in? Could I put some sriracha chili sauce? Yes. Could I put some diced up green onion in here? Yes. Could I put a little sautéed red onion in with these? It'd be delicious. Yes. Did I? No, because I wanted to stick to three ingredient week. In fact, by the way, tomorrow night, one of the, uh, I'm making two things tomorrow night, which will be Thursday. Uh, two things. One of them is a one ingredient recipe. And, um, <laughs> I can't wait. You <laughs> know, right? I want to thank, uh, our longest running sponsor, Fixtures Living. Mm. Oh, God, these are so good. I have a class at Fixtures Living August 17th, Friday night, in the brand new kitchen that they built for me. Do you still have those pictures? Yeah, we can go grab them. See if you can grab them. Yeah. In San Diego, on Dowdy Street, off of Miramar Road, their first store. Amazing. Kitchen, bath, outdoor. Joy is what they say. And if you're going to do anything, look at the Mrs. Cooking Guy. There's Kelly right there, oh, laying that's on so the counter. She's the centerpiece of that new. The Jenner kitchen that they built, that is where I will do my classes. So when you go to Fixtures Living, that's what you'll see? Well, you'll, no, you won't <laughs> see Kelly sitting there. If you go look at that Please. picture, that's what you'll see. But they have every manner of amazing thing for your kitchen, for your bath, for your outside. I can't think of going anywhere else because anywhere else would be not the same level of product, not the same level of people. And I think the people part is more important than anything. They're amazing there. First thing they do when you walk in they greet you, which I know sounds stupid, but I've told my horror story of a place that's now out of business that used to ignore. Apparently, I didn't have the right look when I went in this place, and they ignored the F out of me, and I think that's terrible. And it had nothing to do with me being Sam the Cooking Guy. It had everything to do with me being a consumer that wanted to ask questions about their products, and I got ignored. And when I finally got so pissed that nobody asked me anything, I walked up and I said, can I get some help over here in the ovens? And the woman looked up over her glasses and said, do you have an appointment? And I wanted to say, fuck you. Come on. What kind of service is that? But I didn't. I just left. Fixtures living. You walk in. They greet you. They offer you a handcrafted coffee. They ask you what you want to know. And then they take the time to explain things the right way. They're amazing. They're in San Diego. They're in Costa Mesa. They're in the Rancho Mirage. Go there and love them. And soon to be everywhere. And soon to be everywhere. World domination, I believe, is the term they like to use <laughs> around there. They're fantastic. All right. Three ingredient week is a joy to behold. These are fantastic. I wanted to talk about favorite sauces of mine. Maybe I'll save that for Thursday night. Hoisin would be one of them. There's a handful of sauces. If you keep them, you can do a lot of different interesting things with it. Make your life better. And uh, for, hold on, Brian uh, Craft barbecue sauce would be one of them. <laughs> but we'll talk about maybe more interesting ones than that. Anyway, Brian, don't hate us. It is what it is. We're here for everybody. 
not just pit masters. Have a good night. Thanks for being here. Uh, check out our sponsors, Fixtures Living and We All of. Uh, go to their websites, like them, and we'll see you back tomorrow night for the last night of Three Ingredient Week. <laughs>